Hello and welcome back to the letter. And we're going to figure out what Luke's story is and what happened what happened uh, what happened after uh Hannah's story basically S and see how this how sh how in the first place she even got to the position it was in the last video at the very end. So yeah, let's see how this goes. So now it seems like a good time to get drunk. So but I just can't. I can't bring myself to leave her side just to in intoxicate myself, not with what just happened. I might just drink myself to death if I so much as tried. Please, stay with me, darling. Of course. Anything for you, sunshine. There's no way I can leave her side without feeling guilty. Besides, what sort of husband and father would I be if I don't care of her when she's sick? Not that I'm too confident about what I could do on my own, I'm not trained for this sort of thing. Even if I experienced similar scenarios before, it might still have it all wrong. I've already called our personal physician along with the, obs with, uh, with the obstris of obstetrician who knew of her pregnancy or house call in the morning. I'll have to go on from there. I don't like to think about it. I can still remember the doctor's instructions on how to take care of my mother while she was ill. Provide a safe space for her to rest. Check. I rely on her side so that she doesn't choke. Check. Loosen tight clothing to let her breathe. Check. Be calm and don't panic. Well, I'm having a bit of trouble with that one. Alright. Do, do, do you want any water? Something to nibble on, perhaps? I can call for something to be brought up. Soup, soup would be good, right? I'm fine, Luke. Don't you worry. I'm just a little sick, but I'll get better. A pain look across her face, and more than anything, I wish I could take away the pain she feels now. She beckons me to come closer, hold her in my arms. I might say no. Oh, okay. So, her body still quivers, tiny shakes that make my heart feel like it's going to stop and give every time they happen to- hell, Like it's going to stop, give every time they happen too much. I take care to give her room to breathe, no matter how much of an uncomfortable position it puts me in. Her scent is enough to bring me at ease. Golden flowers, marigolds, buttercups, and daffodils. I'm not sure if she smells this way because I surround us with them when I can, or because she's wearing that the perfume I gave her last Christmas. There we go. Now, are we comfy? <laughs> Gosh, I can really never figure out what to think of Luke. Times he's good, times he's an ass. So she nods her head weakly, a smile barely making its way on her lip. Be ready to fill any request she has, anything to make this easier for her, anything to make her happy. But when she but when she next speaks, I can feel my breath catch in my throat. Sing me a lullaby. Oh, so that's why it's that achievement. A lullaby? Uh, of, of course, of course, I can do that. <laughs> uh, don't be London Bridge! <laughs> I know I've done so many things in my lifetime that would justify a horrible end, but not Hannah. She doesn't deserve this. This is all far too horribly familiar. I find myself in bed clutching reverently to an ill beloved of wishing it isn't real and hoping it doesn't get any worse. I find myself screaming to a god I've long abandoned and forgotten. Not her. Not again. Take her and you will bloody rue. A lullaby shared so that we can't forget the pain and the fear. Hush, my darling, don't say a word. I'm gonna catch you a mockingbird. Can you hear her breathing? Breathe, breathe, laugh, though. She doesn't tell me to stop. This amuses her, and that's fine. But her breathing soon even itself, uh, even itself out. Good thing, too. Before I know it, she's fallen asleep. Only it would be as easy for me. I certainly don't envy her. 
but I don't particularly like how my mind runs right now. Rather than afraid clutching at straws and asking myself if I'll really let myself fall apart in this moment. It's alarming how just the thought of losing her could break me, pregnant or not. And if that mockingbird don't sing, I'm gonna get you a diamond ring. I mean, if anything, that's probably the nicest lullaby. Compared to, uh, London Bridge, because it's got how that song is. It's creepy. I really lost my mother, the only other woman I have truly loved in my life, and without knowing then, as a young man, that wounded a great part of me. I'm aware now how scared I am, for lack of a better term. If anything ever happens to Hannah, well, I don't know what I'd do after that. After the fact. The loss drive me insane, but I become mad and swear bloody vengeance on a world that deserves less than her. But I end up drowning in the sorrow and guilt until I end up drinking one night very and figuring a bullet is a good way to go. I perish the thought, but I become like my father, one who had who had no further love for anything. No others or even objects herself. The vainglorious mut muggle that worked and worked for the sake of succeeding in, s in search of happiness that would never come. And if that diamond ring turns brass, we're gonna go to fields of grass. For a long while, I was that man, wasn't I? Pursuing gold and glory, nothing else. Bloody hell, even stir courting Hannah for the money her family had. She was marked to be attained. But she was just so bright. I don't mean intelligent, though. She's certainly that too. <clears throat> no, she was bright in a manner that she could bring such sunshine to anyone's dreary life. I thought I would need to put on a mask with her, <clears throat> just like with all the others. If anything else, she made it feel so constricting, suffocating, that I pulled off the mask on my own. <clears throat> I had wanted to be myself around her, so that she was so willfully showing her real self to those around her. It wasn't so sudden realization. It wasn't some sudden realization. There was no eureka moment. It just happened. And in those fields where we were home. We'll take daffodils for our home. We'd meet up and talk about business, but then those could only last for so long after a few dozen dates. We ended up take talking about other things, little things that didn't seem to matter so much. Inconsequential things that women end up forgetting it, forgetting in the grand scheme of things. Good food, good music, dogs, the film we just saw, books we've read while we were apart, and places we want to go to. Things that weren't important suddenly, suddenly are. It confused me so much, but I was happy, and at some point I told myself that this was the woman I wanted to spend my life with. Then I would forget that all, I would forget that a lot. It was out, it was out of some misguided need to be my own person, to be Fine by anyone else. I refuse to put her on a pedestal or to make her the center of my universe. Married or not, we're our own person at the end of the day. But I would forget too, at the very least, I remember that she was there with me. And if those daffodils die and dwindle, we'll still have the home that we built. I realize this lullaby is pr pretty much explaining their relationship, I guess. She made me better, but I was, um, still me to an extent. Still the son of a bitch that has something to prove. I forgot it again and again, no matter how hard I try. I spend extra hours at the office for something or another. To have favorable stocks to take care of a debt, something. Sometimes I'll even bring work home if I haven't gone, gone to drink and destroy my liver. I'll flaunt the riches, some of which aren't even rightfully mine in the first place, and lord myself over everyone else's 
because I fucking deserve it. Because that is how I prove myself. But I don't even have to prove myself to Hannah. Sometimes I wonder, had we met under different circumstances, had I grown up a different way, would all of this be any better? Would we be any happier? Good night, my sunshine. Now there's a thought. Um, a timeline. Yeah, so we're right near day, though I th think Ash was a day behind? So I'm curious on how quickly we're going to go through um, Lou, being that Ash was still pretty lengthy. Um, other events. Not much happens today, okay. Mummy, what happened? You were wiggling and shaking, you wouldn't stop, even if I was shouting. I'm so sorry I shouted at you, Mummy. Shh, don't cry. My little ball of sunshine's not supposed to cry, is he? <laughs> don't you worry. Mummy is just a little sick, but she'll get better. I've got a new job now, and I can get medicine again, okay? And we'll buy some bread pudding, too, while we're at it. Please don't do that again, Mummy. It's scary. It's okay. I'm here. You've got nothing to fear. But you have to be brave, too, Lucille. Even when I'm not around. Lucille? Be brave. I show up back at a, scr a scream and wake up in a cold sweat. It's my heart pounding in my ears it takes a while to remember where I am. The dark and cold of the room, one can't fault me for feeling ill at ease. It isn't as bright as the penthouse. The renovation did little change how old it feels. Been here for less than a week. Take a, it'll take a bit more time to adjust. Start to feel cozy though when I'm bloody freezing. Nudging the lump of fabric next to me, I sigh. Uh, it's cold. Don't hug the sheets, Hana. She's not there though. She always did this though, it hardly bothered me. Growing up, I was lucky to have something to use as a mattress. Not the one who grew up accustomed to Egyptian cotton. The thread count 800. Besides the warmth that Hannah executed on her, when it's usually enough to keep me sleeping through the night. Temperature. Didn't you wake up from a scream though? Temperature tonight must be something else. How chilly it is right now. I must, I must be considerate. After all, the poor dear is ill. Though I loathe to think about what had just transpired. Don't make me pull those sheets off you. Oh, that blanket is large enough to cover an elephant. You need to share. <laughs> Takes a while. What was that? Apologies. I'm just in the loo, so if you can give me a moment. Huh? There's no sign that they'll be moving where they lie. What? With care, I go for a knife, hit under the side of my bed. It'd be foolish of me to instigate anything while I'm unarmed, after all. To pull back the covers would be a more difficult affair, because we have to uncover who was underneath. I have to prepare for anything I assume the worst. So much as this nozzle of gun, there's going to be a murder tonight. I know they say not to bring a knife to a gunfight, but I think I could sink a blade in his liver faster than he could point a name. Wait, is the blank actually moving? Oh, it is moving! I see the rise and fall of the sheets, though it could easily be mistaken as the fault of the breeze. I hate their breathing. A great sense of foreboding comes over me, making me Hesitate with my plan. I should just get Hannah myself out of here and not look back and let security handle it. That's what they're for. Maybe I should just man up. There's no way I'm risking the chance that in can inaction will put Hannah in danger. What's the worst that could happen, right? I have no reason to be afraid. There's no boogeyman under the bed. Monster in my closet. Anything these things should be afraid of me, right? Grab a fistful of sheets and throw them aside. It's gonna be the ghost, isn't it? Huh? Oh, okay. Where is this? Holy shit. <laughs> okay, it's towards the 
end. Okay. Nothing. What about a bunch of pillows stare back at me? That's been my imagination. I'd rather not think I'm going mad. Could very well be the stress getting to me. All this trauma with Hannah. Doing well all these years, all things considered, I guess I do have a breaking point. So the world goes on even if one cannot. And I must go along with it. Suppose the day off for two wouldn't hurt. Rest aside from a few hours of sleep will be welcome more than. But I can't shake off the unease. I dare say that I feel afraid, rational so that something will come creeping and crawling from under the bed as I lay back down and close my eyes. Now it's the 30th. Thought dreams don't linger, thankfully, but with the morning comes another disturbance. It's too loud and too sharp for my taste. I have very fine taste. The piercing rings of the doorbell reaches even the bedroom. I'm very much inclined to think the person who built this place lacks any sense of it. Perhaps the only thing good in this is the ruckus has chased away the needing guilt from last night's commotion. Only temporarily. So it's a bloody annoying distraction. I can tell Ray that it's going to be a long day. It hasn't even started. Before the racket even lasts another minute, I'm peeling myself off the bed and hang straight for the main door. I'll be a there'll be a murder today if this doesn't let up. How quaint! It seems everything in this blessed universe is intent on getting my nerves as of late. God and Bennett, only a Nancy would knock at such an ungodly hour. I mean, they're ringing, and I'm feeling it's Zach. First place, I shouldn't be the one doing this. That's why I hired a valet. Fuck's sake. Where's that damn butler when I need him? I'll be honest, if only for today. The mansion this quiet at this hour of the morning, I used to believe the slow ghost stories might be real. But the only horror here is the news Hannah has brought forth yesterday of the very idea of being a father. Neither the deafening silence nor the biting chill spraying across every room and place. My wife is pregnant, bloody bollocks. There's no place for fear when another set of problems already burns that fuel. So I wait for another second. No butler still answers my call. I simply yank the door open myself, perhaps more force than needed. Zach? It is. Maybe it should be a pair appropriately there, seeing the person on the other side. Hour and the hour he dared appeared on my doorstep. And someone with half a brain that was not to serve anyone this early. Brief confusion quickly gives way to anger, and before the bloody photographer can even get a word in, hurling venom at him. It's less than he deserves, really. Really? I didn't expect him to be like that. And will disprove scold me for treating the photographer with such disrespect if she hears me right now. Oh, Seems fond of him, after all, despite meeting him only once or twice. He's merely doing his job, she'll say. But she's not here, isn't she? But she doesn't know. You? How the hell did you get in here? I mean, he's on the front porch. <laughs> what in seven hells do you want? It's bloody six in the morning! Listen, sir, I know this is not a good time. Oh, it's not a good time. Did you even check the clock before coming here? I bet you didn't. It's still my home. My rules also apply to this place as much as Hannah's do. As simple as that. Unlike you, the ones living in this house need to sleep. It just so happens it's also a person I will never take a liking to. No need for remorse. Come back when people are actually awake, or I'll call security on you. Continue shouting even as I slam the door in his face. Some nonsense about the news lately, though I don't understand most of it. However, with the closed doors muffling batter part of it, and with no ears to listen, the tire doesn't last too long. Hmm, okay. Vetri leaves and silence once again fills the room, as it should. In hindsight, maybe I should also call for psychiatric service? It certainly sounds mental, just screaming like that. Suspicious man like him left roaming the roaming the immediate crowns. Nothing good can come of it. If his presence will indeed bring a problem, sign of bad things come. Probably no soon enough. Worst comes to worst, he 
Johannes will take care of it if need be. That's why I'm paying him for. Meantime, the bigger problem at hand. It's on. It's on a whim that I've chosen to cook. Sure, I have a lot of other things I could have done instead, but cooking distracts me, and I do find it relaxing on the rare occasion I step up to the task. On the tray, two plates of roti pid, spicy beans, boiled eggs, hash brown, and bacon top off with peppers, corgettes, and a keys? I don't know what those last two are, but okay. I mean, it looks good. Uh, I can't get back to sleep after my abrupt awakening earlier. I imagine those are hard boiled eggs. <laughs> I would, one would hope that is. <laughs> um, so anyways, I did think about drinking to get some 40 wings. I've changed my mind. The reminder that my very pregnant wife is sick in bed. I love my alcohol, no doubt, but there are times when even I shouldn't drink. That's as it is. I'm bringing on nothing but two cups of coffee before I can even shake Hannah awake and present her with what I prepared. That interrupts me. In the tray on the table, I open the door to be greeted by none other than Shurkin? Shurkin? The sight of his grumpy face is enough to dampen my good mood. I can only follow when he gestures towards hallway. I have a question as to why he would bother me at this hour in the morning. But going by the grim or rather grimmer than usual air about him must be something serious. Man stands there as relax and cool as can be. Baz says, eyes hold on tense city. Probably nothing but trouble. I do hope I wasn't interrupting anything. Well, I have plans. Slipping in is one of them, too. But apparently, the world conspires against me. What do you want? If you wish to sleep so badly, feel free to tuck yourself back in bed. I thought you ought to know that we've had an intruder. Oh. Like with how things are, I'm just thinking back, I'm like, gosh, I was completely off with the day that Hannah was in that situation, and yeah. <laughs> so, sue me if that doesn't pique my curiosity. True as thieves, who would dare set foot to my house, try and rob me, rob me where, rob me where rare. If they had any form of experience, they'd have an idea not to mess with the rights, no matter how tempting our riches may be. But that, but that did not mean attempted robberies did not happen. What was strange about this one is the fact that Johannes thought it is important to bring to my attention. Oftentimes they deal with pests because I wouldn't really care how they take care of it, so... This needs my attention, why? Are they any danger? Actually, I think I'll let you be the judge of that. He's down in the parlor. Come on. That's the bedroom door, hoping to goodness that Hannah will remain fast asleep before following him downstairs. To the foyer, and into the parlor where, where a familiar man sits unconscious, unconscious, tied up to one of the chairs. I thought I heard something scurrying around. As it turns out, it's a giant rat. And one that had pretended to be a harmless mouse, too. He doesn't have anything on him, but it's like a camera. Alive, isn't he? That updated? Okay, somewhere towards the end. I oh whoa, whoa! God, you has really beat him up. It's hard to tell what the way his body is too still, breathes too light. Buzz there, the silver rise and fall of his chest. The present lets me breathe a sigh of relief. This caused by one of my men is normal to be expected, really. What? Dead by I can deal with, it'll just be the one of many I've seen. If one turns up while the missus is at home, I'm not too thrilled with the idea. I saw no reason to do more than incapacitate him. So yes, the man is still alive. Of course, that can be remedied if you wish. God damn. No, it's... This is fine. He wasn't trying to kill us, was he? If he was, he was wholly unprepared. But I do not think he had such nefarious purposes. Then why the fuck you still send him off as intruder? He is a big man, but he seems too soft to be a hired killer. 
A common trespasser or petty thief, maybe. Certainly nothing more. Like, with the way he's dressed, I doubt he could be a thief. <laughs> Seriously, Johannes, god damn it. Pay thief dares to try anything against me. People are forgetting their place. It's been made an example of. Guy slacks off for once and everyone thinks they could get away with taking advantage. This thieving way is going to be his one way ticket behind bars. It's only as my anger washes away that I realize that the sun is starting to rise off into the horizon. I can only feel annoyance at myself for missing another night's sleep. Call the police then, let them round him up and bring me some bloody coffee while you're at it. Thankfully he leads me to my own simmering as I take one of the free seats while waiting for my drink I find myself staring at this man. Let's see why Hannah took an interest in him. I was talking with Zachary, the photographer for luxury living. Hannah is nice, but that doesn't mean she befriended every John and Jane from the street. He was a perfect gentleman, Luke. I can't say the same for you as of recent. Look at that man. Called a perfect gentleman now, dearest. Look, Luke. Nothing will happen. You have to relax. It was just a friendly chat. Friend who takes advantage of someone who has shown them kindness. Really, such soft hearts could not survive in this world for long. And is only so lucky that I'm here for her. You have the whole fucking situation wrong, and you're just believing you has for mistaking the situation. God dang it! So who better protect her from the monsters than the worst of them all? And as it always does when I'm in such a situation, the power I wield hits me like an unnatural high. Something else when I can hold a man's life in my hand without resorting to murder. Person is the person is as good as in incarcerated the moment I send them Harvey's way. This makes me wonder if I can make luxury living grovely beg for beg for my forgiveness because it's the crime committed against me by one of their staff. Deep in my thoughts, stuck in this power trip, rushes through me. Barely knows if we have company until Jonas puts a cup of coffee in my hands. Officer Carl and his colleague are here to collect. They'll want your statement. And as he says, there are two officers by the door. God, they're fast. Though I can't even bother to spare time, spare them the slightest of glance before looking back at the conscious uh, Gollowig. If they need my statement, I'll give it to their chief. I'm due a visit to a good friend anyway. My cough. After my coffee and a bit of breakfast, of course. Once I'm done breaking my fast, and after a cool shower. Call for Joanna to drive me to the police station so I could give my statement. Through it all, Hannah still slumbers, sleeping off whatever lies, whatever illness has taken her. Right to the precinct is quite a fair. I'm in no mood for ideal chatter with what little sleep I've had. Not everything is smooth sailing, however, as soon as I strive at the precinct, I, the precinct I either. But as they say, a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. <clears throat> It'd be more suspicious if everything had gone on without ruckus. <clears throat> and it would be more boring too. Because who doesn't love a good fight and a bit of drama? There's nothing quite like beating your opponent down and making them learn who's the boss. If life just slumped over, there would be no point in even trying but I would be much happier if the troubles troubles life threw at me did include ruining my suit. Oh, did they just skip what occurred? Yeah, they did. Okay. Life in this case is the estate agent Lily who had the audacity to throw water at me. You bloody. It's been a pleasure doing business with you, sir. Who even does that? Her. <laughs> she does, obviously. Uh that Third world country woman has gotten too big for her britches. That's who. This is Sixton X5, and this whole assemble, assembly cost me 40,000 pounds. That's an expensive outfit. Oh my god. I can charge her for water damages to the tie alone. I have her begging down on her knees for my forgiveness. That little girl, really now? If I hadn't heard that. The company she works for is closing. I 
talk to our manager and have her fired. Graceful exit in a police chief's room. All I could was all I could muster in the face of such insult. My mood is further soured by the fact that I can still see the rest of the precinct from here. Fair least Johannes is making himself useful and staying inside the door, make sure no one enters unannounced. And now here I am, dabbing a handkerchief at my wetsuit to no avail. It'd have to be given to one of the maids clean as I go as I get home. This is just horrible. Interlining is going to pucker and pull Ugh. But at least it's not wine, I suppose. I mean, I'm so hmm. sorry about what happened out there, mate. But you know how it is with these officers. All testosterone and ranking. Well, you need to learn how to keep your uh. in line better, mate. But I didn't come here to talk about these hot-headed daft villains. They could be dead from the neck up for all I care. He has a pros uh, propensity to forget one tiny detail. I own him. Oh. I want to see and raid. Find him who exactly the boss here is. I very well can't, thanks to the wonders of soundproofing. But the stress and nerve expression on his face stops me from giving him a tongue lashing. It would really do me a, no good to be at odds with me when he does prove to be a useful ally from time to time. So I listen when he speaks, focusing on small smell of coffee and cigarettes that fill the room in, uh, in order to curb my tongue. For now. Boy, when I let a man like Harvey Lee speak, he speaks a lot. Look, all I'm asking is that you be a bit patient with them. You do realize a good chunk of them don't work. They aren't with you, so to speak. Bunch of kids who think the police are superheroes or some cock and bull. They, uh, they don't know how things work around here, especially that Frey boy. The lot of them are just tired. Surprise! That's what he's saying. And why are you telling me this? I was going to ask you if you knew anything about it. Perhaps one of yours know. There's been a string of uh, unfortunate incidents as of late. Just recently, some bloke named Christian Sai was acting all nuts off his rocker, that man. And we had to hold him, thought he was drunk, up until he started bashing his brains in. Now he's a vegetable in hospital bed. Another time, some Mark Julius was reported missing. Some are thinking we've got a serial killer on our hands as of late. That Cooper lady from BRC got done in, and a, uh, a Father Norman, too. Oh, I forgot about Father Norman. Oh. You have to understand, mate. In a place as uh, peaceful as Luxburn, this makes people wary. Reported crime rates go a bit higher than usual, and it makes them antsy and temperamental. Are you implying that I have anything to do with them? Because as much as I hate to say it and admit, I am... Out of the loop. This is the first I've heard of these incidents. Well, I'd say I am insulted, but this is par for the course. Harvey knows who and what I am. We have a deal of sorts, after all. I'm as always expected in a society with laws and with humans who are allowed their free will. But why not strike a deal with the devil to make sure that said crime has some order at least. Ah, well, that's a shame, I suppose. Figured if we could get any leads, it'd be from you. Why would that be? I can't stop the scoff that leaves me. Can these police officers really be so incompetent? Chief of the damn police force seems to find it amusing, however. Hold on. <laughs> my eyes are like burning, so it's hard to read right now. Oh my god. As far as I can see, whether he believes it or not, it's got it easy in our little deal. He just has to sit back and relax, let me do my thing and not turn against me while he gets to live a comfy life. Perhaps that's why I haven't killed him off yet. What? His predecessor to the position wasn't so agreeable. You know, someday I'll stop turning in my own men when they piss me off. 
What? And what will you do then? <laughs> you and your men will all be lost without me. <sighs> I'll just hope that when the time comes, I'll already be all wrinkly and retired then. It's all a play of his. It's always is. To act all casual and chuckling at everything like it doesn't faze him. So did he? Act so did Luke actually commit crimes before? So pretends he's one of those kind. Wise old men types so that people can't bring themselves to be angry at him. I've seen him drunk off his arse, uh, bemoaning his fate. What's he's become, though? He tries to be as vague as he can even in his inhabited state. I've seen the mouse this man is capable of. That's why it confuses me with how he reacts to what I, s what I say next. So what is our little gollywog looking at? Now there's never a time or place for that kind of racist talk, son. Cuts me off in a firm tone before I could say anything further. There's, there is steel in his eyes, and he near slams his fist to the table when he does. I can't help but sigh, feeling that that he's going through one of his self-righteous streaks, for as they may be. You know our little deal ties up my hands when it comes to a lot of things with you. But I hear that steel is a good kid. And I ask you at least show a bit of respect. He's a felon. I think I'm entitled to call him what I please. I don't owe him any respect at all. Well, fuck you, Le Le Luke. Leak. Luke. Whatever. He's Leak. <laughs> He's an ass. <laughs> In my pocket, he may be, but he still chooses the path of the policeman himself when he was a young man. I bet it just boils his blood that he has to deal with the likes of me. Bye, in turn. I hate the sight of him that makes him think he's still some do-gooder, some hero of justice, because this, because spineless fools were useful. So righteous ones forced me to do away with them eventually. You put plenty of your own white men in jail. I don't see you calling them a... I don't know, a white <laughs> cracker or whatever <laughs> lingo they have nowadays. A white cracker? <laughs> okay. No, that is... What people can call white people is just, I don't know, I found that term just funny. Because <laughs> I'm like, of all things, a cracker? <laughs> I don't know how that's entirely offensive, it's just silly <laughs> for a offensive word, and that's what I think anyways. I know it's offensive, but I'm just like, it's a silly offensive word. <laughs> Anyways. And if not respect, you can at least owe the lad some basic human decency. <sighs> Whatever. But if you got a stick up your ass about it, I'll concede. He's going behind bars either way, for however long that is. So, what does it matter if he's black or white? The color of his skin doesn't change anything about current circumstances. I mean, you were in the situation, Luke. So you don't know, you just believed what the fuck your butler said. He mistook the situation and attacked someone who didn't even do anything. <laughs> just uh, entered the room and then just got assaulted. That's it. That's a trifle match at Are you over? It's six months and a fine worth 5,000 for breaking and entering. Unless you'd be willing to go easy on the guy. Let him bump it down to a misdemeanor and juvenile offense. We'll be giving him probation and charge him for the damages. And that's it? That's it. That's what a white man gets and that's what he gets too. Unless you're going to stir up a fuss and make a big deal out of this. In case you've forgotten, I do what I want, Lee. I don't even see why you protect the man. He's nothing but a petty thief. Doesn't have anything on him. And won't that look bad on you? The Luke Wright, getting his panties in a bunch over a petty thief. You said it yourself. He's nothing. Not worth your attention or effort. So why don't you just let me handle it like I'm supposed to? And I do hate to say it, but he's got me there. I hate that all his power comes with the great balancing act. Be too lax and people will think they could get away with the smallest of things. Be too harsh and people will... Well, they'll not want to work with me for long and that's never a good thing in the long, run, in the long term. It shows on me poorly. I fuss, If I were to fuss over such an insignificant little maggot... Now is that all you're here for? Well, there's another thing I want to ask. What? Can't I visit a friend? That detective. Feathers. Should I be concerned about him? He seemed keen. 
Feathers. Oh, you mean Frey. <laughs> nah, he's not really anything to worry about. I got him assigned to your case to make the old thing believable. The boy's a good detective, one of the best I have on the force. But he won't be able to do shit with all the red tape tying him up. In fact, the higher-ups just took him off your tail. The case against me? I still have one? Harvey, my dear old friend. Have you been slacking off? So Luke did do that crime! And Lee's been working with him this whole time? I was really trying to hope that wasn't true because it seemed too obvious. Nope. Nope. He is actually the criminal. And they've done and Lee's done everything in his power as he can, and I guess the harps are also working with Luke as well. To make sure he doesn't get in trouble. For whatever reason that he has on them, I guess. But I think I need to end the video here, because I keep recording a little too long. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, go with the like button maybe. And if you want to see more, know what's going to happen next, even though I doubt I can't do much of Luke, but we'll see. Uh, maybe go with the subscribe button to be notified of anything I do, really. Uh, if you got anything to say, say in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Comrades!